Hi everyone, and welcome to Keeping Food Safe in Durham, a segment designed to highlight the importance of food safety. We have a lot of topics to discuss today. Some of our topics are how foodborne illnesses occur, how food becomes unsafe, time and temperature control for safety of foods, populations at high risk for foodborne illnesses, and how to keep food safe in the home. But before we get started, let's take a second and introduce ourselves and share a little bit about Cooperative Extension Services. I'm Erin Roberts, Adult FNEP Nutrition Educator with the Durham County Cooperative Extension. FNEP is the Expanded Food and Nutrition Education Program. We teach families hands-on nutrition, healthy cooking, and physical activity. And I'm Carlos Moses, Youth FNEP Nutrition Educator with the Durham County Cooperative Extension. The Durham County Cooperative Extension connects residents with essential resources and education to improve their quality of life. With our traditional and non-traditional programs, our office promotes lifelong learning. It helps people put research-based knowledge to work by providing a host of local programs that address the economy, education, agriculture, horticulture, and health. NC Cooperative Extension is a part of NC State and NC a and University and can be found in every county of our state. Did you know the Center for Disease Control estimates that each year, roughly one out of six Americans, or 48 million people, get sick, 128,000 are hospitalized, and 3,000 die from foodborne diseases? And also reducing foodborne illness by 10% would keep about 5 million Americans from getting sick each year. So how do we define a foodborne illness, you ask? A foodborne illness is a disease carried or transmitted to people by food and certain populations are considered at high risk, for example, elderly people, preschool-age children, and people with compromised immune systems. And how food becomes unsafe? Well, there's lots of ways. When we purchase food from unsafe sources, failing to cook food correctly, holding food at incorrect temperatures, using contaminated utensils, and even practicing poor personal hygiene. Speaking of personal hygiene, Proper hand washing is critical in preventing foodborne illnesses. The key to proper hand washing is to practice five simple steps. Okay, so first we want to wet our hands and arms. Use warm running water as hot as you can comfortably stand. Then apply the soap. Be sure to use enough to build up a good lather. Next, we want to scrub our hands and arms vigorously. Do this for a good 10 to 15 seconds and be sure to clean under fingernails and between fingers. Then we're going to rinse our hands and arms thoroughly with warm running water. And lastly, dry your hands and arms with a single use paper towel and dispose of it properly. So Carlos, why should I use a paper towel? We see a cloth towel might have some germs on it, so we want to start with a fresh clean paper towel and dispose of it properly each time. So the process should take at least 20 seconds and should be done before, during, and after food handling and preparation. Now you should always use soap and warm running water. Hand sanitizer should only be used when there is no access to water and soap. You might not realize it, but it's important to wash your hands after going to the restroom, diapering, coughing or sneezing, taking out the garbage, petting or playing with your animals, and after using tobacco products. Just because something looks clean doesn't mean that it is. Keeping the kitchen area and utensils clean and sanitized can help reduce germs that can make one sick. It's important to distinguish between cleaning and sanitizing. Cleaning is the process of physically removing dirt and crumbs of food. Sanitizing is a process of disinfecting or killing germs. Remember to always clean and sanitize surfaces before and after food preparation. It's so easy to make your own inexpensive sanitizing solution. All you need are a few simple items. A spray bottle, unscented chlorine bleach, two cups of water, preferably room temperature, and just a few measuring spoons. 
You simply just have your funnel in place, pour your water, and measure out just a little bit of bleach. You only need one fourth teaspoon. Only that much is enough? Only that much. The reason why is bleach goes a long way. Okay. Only a little bit can definitely sanitize your surfaces. Fantastic. So after that, you put the top on. And we're done? And we're done. How easy is that? That's really easy. So you just store your solution in a dark cabinet. You replace it once a week. So you can even make a sanitizer for dishes. So easy. After washing, you soak dishes in a sink filled with one gallon warm water and one tablespoon unscented chlorine bleach. So once food is brought into our home, it's our responsibility to keep it safe and to prevent cross-contamination. Mm -hmm. Cross-contamination is the transfer of microorganisms from one food or surface to another. It can quickly occur when a raw food, for example meat, touches or drips fluid onto a food that is ready to eat. Or if the same utensils are used for a raw meat product and a ready to eat product without washing and sanitizing between uses. Be, Be smart. smart. Keep, Keep foods, foods apart. apart. So right now we're going to demonstrate how cross-contamination often happens in the home. Many times folks will take their raw chicken breast and put it on a cutting board such as this to remove the excess fat. So what happens when we do this is we're leaving the contaminated juices or drippings on the cutting board. Where cross-contamination often happens is that we will take our raw fresh produce and we'll put it on the same contaminated cutting board. Oh no. Mm. That's right. So what we should do instead is we should start with a fresh, brand new cutting board. In the event that we do not have another cutting board, what we can do is we can sanitize the cutting board, the contaminated one, in the sink. Proper cooking can kill almost all dangerous microorganisms. The only way to reduce microorganisms in food to safe levels is to cook it to the required minimum internal temperature. The minimum internal temperature varies from product to product. A food's temperature should be taken in the thickest part. And at least two readings should be taken in two separate locations. We never want to assume that a food is done just by looking at it, Aaron. Go ahead, cut into that chicken that looks cooked. My goodness, look how pink that is. Exactly. I thought that was done. Just because it looks cooked doesn't mean that it's safe to eat. Oh man, wow. Microorganisms or bacteria can multiply very quickly if food is stored at room temperature. Bacteria grow well in food held between the temperatures of 41 and 135 degrees. This range is known as the temperature danger zone. Bacteria cannot multiply if foods are too hot or too cold. Cooling or freezing food does not kill microorganisms, but limits the growth. A good rule of thumb is to keep hot foods hot and cold foods cold. Promptly cool and store leftovers in tightly covered containers and remember to thaw foods in the refrigerator. And if you thaw foods using the microwave, which most of us do, you must cook them immediately. And, and when, when in doubt, doubt throw, throw it out. out. So Aaron, what are some tips for keeping food safe in the refrigerator or freezer? Well, I'm glad you asked, Carlos. We want to always wash fresh produce before eating, place raw meat on the bottom shelf of the refrigerator in a plastic bag. This will keep the juices from dripping onto other foods. We want to wrap foods tightly using freezer wrap and a freezer bag before placing them into the freezer. Always remember to label. 
To allow for air circulation in either your fridge or freezer, do not overfill the compartment. Without good circulation, it's difficult to maintain the proper temperatures. So here's an easy way to label packages to be stored. You want to take a permanent marker and you want to write what the item is on the bag. And always remember to put the date that the item was frozen. Today's date, of course, is the 20th of July. And voila. So now, the next time that somebody goes into the freezer, they'll know that this is my chicken and they can keep their paws off of it. Thank you so much for joining us today, and for more on food safety, please visit us at your Durham County Cooperative Extension Office, located at 721 Foster Street, Durham, North Carolina, 27701, or contact us at 919-560-0501. You can also find more information at our website. The address is durham.ces. .ncsu.edu. Y muchas gracias a todos por estar aquí con nosotros. Para más información sobre los alimentos y nutrición, contacta a la oficina de Cooperative Extension aquí en el condado de Durham. La dirección es 721 Calle Foster, Durham, 27701, o se puede llamar a 919-560. 0501. Y nuestro website es durham.ces.ncsu.edu. Gracias y adiós.